Today, we talk about how to create engaging content by making them more authentic. Sometimes, I have to confess, I fail to be real with you folks. See, we try to publish as often as possible. Having that target, I am sometimes more focused on crafting whatever it is that I can push out and publish. At some point, we changed how we selected the topics that we're gonna push out. Instead of being strategic with things like keyword research and other types of planning, we designed these videos to address whatever it is that we are up to, whatever it is that we are interested in. These topics, these videos are inspired by what we are building, the challenges that we are facing, whatever tough things I'm personally facing, and what our clients need from us. Having said that, I still can't shake the feeling that I'm not being as authentic as I'd like to be. I felt like there was a tug of war between what the market demands from us based on keyword research or other types of strategizing, and number two, what we want to talk about. Fortunately, the numbers support authenticity. For example, I saw a pattern at Quora because you get super fast feedback on Quora. Whenever I answer questions based on what I feel strongly about, based on what I have stories to tell about, I get higher chances of getting super, super high engagement. Whenever our content is inauthentic, it just does not feel right. Ultimately, the market would not reward the content whenever we don't have real stories background to share about the, the topic. All right, let's move on to our regular programming. Time for us to proceed with our three stories and tips. Stay alert because you will get three actionable tips in the end. My name is Alan from NorthStories.io and today let's discuss three hot stories about the topic of being authentic. Number one, number two, and number three. Let us start with number one from Kaylee Moore. Most important lesson she can teach us about writing right now. Let us quote a tweet. We're asked, what's your content strategy? The answer of Jason Fried, not calling it content, not thinking of it as content. We write whenever we have something to share. Jason Fried of Basecamp, very powerful stuff. This stunned me and I had to reflect why. I'm in the content business. And then later I found out this great discussion at inbound.org started by Kaylee Moore, where she wrote about this and got so much engagement at inbound. I also found the similar discussion in another Facebook group. Folks whose job it is to constantly produce content needless to say, are stunned by this su subject. I very much appreciate the insights here from Kaylee Moore. She suggests story-based posts. What does this mean? Writing isn't just a marketing tactic, according to Kaylee. Most interest writing has soul. It has a so person behind it. It connects with the reader on a dif different, in a deeper level. To achieve that, Kaylee suggests the following. Number one, telling a personal story. Number two, being candid about the good and the bad. Number three, sharing our experiences based on the lessons learned in an authentic and genuine way. Spot on lessons. Your five minute tip for moving forward with this is to look for the most authentic post in your archive, whether that's your Twitter stream, blog, newsletter, or whatever it might be. Do you remember that moment when you shared something with so much soul? If you're struggling to look for an example, I invite you to post in a far more personal way. If there's an old blog post where you poured your heart out, go check that out and ask yourself, what makes that piece stand out? Why did you get more engagement? Why were you more real that moment? Ask yourself, how can you produce more of that? Okay. Story number two. Power is not granted, it's assumed, or how we have people pay attention. This one's unusual. I've been following 
the content by Alex Berman for a while now. I follow his YouTube podcast. Follow him on Twitter. Check out this video style. There's something that you will notice. The background here is darkened, but look at the room. He doesn't manicure it. He doesn't manufacture the look. I very much admire the authenticity and humility. He doesn't edit it out. He shows his room. He doesn't like uh, make a big deal out of the videos. He just shows up. In his recent video, he started off by sharing very personal experiences. He talked about getting pitched for religions while walking around in the city. He talked about authenticity in terms of keeping your mannerisms and the way you talk. He's just authentic. It's about taking charge, right? It's not about, for example, dressing up. Ironically, we have a dressed up GIF right here. Um, it's about... Let, let us unpack what's going on here. Alex is authentic in terms of his videos and his content. This is why I stay tuned to his vi YouTube channel. Let us go to the five minute tip. Identify what you have changed to make you look better, right? Let us take the lesson from Alex here. Are you holding back details about your profession? Alex, for example, talked about him looking young and not trying to look older than he is, right? Do you try to make your business look bigger than it is? By identifying bits that you could have been holding back, let us look at opportunities to produce content that is more powerful by showing who we really are and not hiding some details about our businesses. Story number three, everybody's winging it from Josh Pigford. Kaylee Moore endorsed this story as an example of an authentic blog post. I also happen to have come across this piece already, the blog version, the uh, podcast version, and whatnot. This is by Josh of Bear Metrics. Here he talked about selling a house, a date with his wife, and subscriber cancellations. You know, this is very refreshing, this kind of authenticity, sharing one's challenges and personal details. We rarely hear stories from businesses that we follow. We rarely hear what's difficult about them, just the good stuff usually. Whether about it's about their personal lives or businesses, it's re rare to hear. Why? People, of course, want to look good. Now. This is exactly the topic of Josh's piece. No matter how successful you are, everyone's winging it. No one has it figured out. Everyone is struggling. No one got their stuff fully sorted out. Not all the time. Your five minute tip is to identify challenges that you are facing. We can limit this to troubles in your business. First, you want to acknowledge and recognize the issues and not just say, hey, how's your business? All good, all good. Oh, it's all great. Not everything is all great, not all the time. That's the prerequisite to being able to do something about it by recognizing it first. Later, check out what you can share. For many, you may share these challenges with your business acquaintances, your masterminds and whatnot. For some, you may turn these challenges into materials that you can push out as blog posts and whatnot so you can share them with your audience. By expressing your authentic voice, folks will see you differently. They will engage with you differently. They will see the people behind the logo. It's easier to trust someone who's real. It's easier to suggest next actions to someone who's real. It's easier to see what can be improved? All right, there you have it for today. Let us do a recap of the three five-minute tips. Number one, you want to look for your most authentic post in your archive and then ask yourself, how can I make more of that? Number two, you want to see what you have changed to look better. How can you get real? What details can you now open up with? And number three, identify the challenges that you are facing. After identifying challenges, maybe 
you can open them up to folks in your team, your business acquaintances, and even your prospects. Choose one that you will practice today and pledge your commitment. Tweet it to me at Alan Kaig. And to encourage this type of content, give this video a thumbs up. See you again here next week.